Hello, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. Today we're going to talk about how you can solve quadratic equations using what's called the factor sum method. So let's get started. So this is a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. In order to use the factor sum method, there's a couple of things that have to happen. First of all, your a, which is the first coefficient, has to be 1, or else the steps that I show you aren't going to work, unfortunately. The process is you look at your c value, and you want to find two factors or two numbers that multiply to get c, but add up to get b. So that's where the sum comes in. When you do that, you're going to break your quadratic equation into two different factors. So they're going to be in parentheses. It'll be x plus or minus some number times x plus or minus some other number. Once you have those, you're going to set each of those equal to zero, and you're going to solve, and those are going to be your solutions. I know it might sound a little confusing at first, but once we get through a couple of examples, it'll make more sense. So let's get started. So we have a quadratic equation, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Our a, which is the number in front of x squared, is 1. So it means we can go ahead and try our factor sum method. We need two factors of 6 that will add up to get 5. So let's take a look at those. Two factors of 6, we have 1 times 6, and we have 2 times 3. Well, 1 plus 6 is going to be 7, so we can't use those. 2 plus 3 is going to be 5, which is what we want. So let's use these two numbers. So we have our factors. x and x will always be the first term in your factors. And the numbers you just found are going to be the other term. So we have a positive 2 and a positive 3. The signs kind of fill in themselves. Set each of these parentheses equal to 0 and solve, and those will be your solutions. So on the left, we can subtract 2 from both sides, and on the right, we can subtract 3 from both sides. So minus 2, minus 2. And on the left, we get x is negative 2. And on the right, we get x is negative 3. So these are the two solutions to this example 1. Let's try another one x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. So again, our first coefficient, the number in front of x squared, is 1, which means we can try our factor sum method. We need two factors of negative 15 that will add up to negative 2. The signs are important because they change the numbers we can use. So factors of negative 15, we have 1 and 15. I'm writing them twice because since our factor number is negative, one of our factors has to be negative. So negative there, negative there. We also have 3 and 5. Negative there, negative there. So let's look at adding these up and see if any of them will equal negative 2. Negative 1 plus 15 is not going to work. 1 plus negative 15 isn't going to work either. Negative 3 plus positive 5 is a positive 2, which is close, but we want a negative 2. Positive 3 plus negative 5 is going to get us a negative 2. So these are the two numbers that we need to use. So let's set up our factors. We have x and x. And then we have, again, positive 3, negative 5. Positive 3, negative 5. Just like last time, set each of our factors equal to 0 and solve. On the left, we can subtract 3. And we get negative 3. And on the right, whoop, that should definitely be a negative sign, my fault. There we go. x minus 5. So let's add 5 to both sides. And we get 5. So the reason we're doing this, I don't think I mentioned that, is because if you have two numbers that multiply together to get 0, that means either one of them has to be 0 or both of them have to be 0. That's why we're setting both sides, because we can have either or answer. Let's try one last example, and then we'll see what we get. 
All right, x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. So we need factors of positive 12 that add up to negative 8. When I see this, I automatically think two numbers to multiply to get a positive means both of our numbers have to be positive or both of them have to be negative. Since our sum has to be negative, that means both of our factors have to be negative. That eliminates half of our answer choices. So let's look at the factors and make them both negative. We have 1 and 12. We have 2 and 6. And we have 3 and 4. So go through and figure out which ones add up to negative 8. Negative 1 plus negative 12 doesn't work. Negative 2 plus negative 6, that does work. So these are the numbers we need to use. Negative 2, negative 6. So we have x and x and negative 2, negative 6. So set them each equal to 0 and solve. On the left, we get x is 2. And on the right, we're going to get x is 6. So those are our two solutions. So when I'm looking at a quadratic equation, the first thing I actually look at is, can I use the factor sum method? I think it's a lot quicker than using the quadratic equation, um, although it only does work in a couple of scenarios. If it, ten, if it turns out that you can't use the factor sum method, which means there aren't two numbers that are multiplied to get 12 but add to get negative 8, for example, you can always revert back to the quadratic equation. That'll work for any quadratic um, formula that you have. Um, but I hope that'll help you when you see these types of problems. I think it's a lot quicker, it's a lot easier for me personally, and I hope it will be for you as well. If you'd like more practice or more information, make sure to check out our links below. Thanks. Your education will add up when you visit us at GEDS.com. For future tips and videos, be sure to subscribe and follow.